Hi, I'm Johnny Rodriguez, co-founder here at Brancher.ai, and I wanted to walk you through how you can create an actual app and what it looks like to go through that process and maybe some nuances that you might run into, how you can test, and I think by the end of this video, you'll feel a lot more confident creating your own apps. So today, I'm gonna start by creating uh, my own custom app. If I wanted to use the template library, I could go and do that and say, hey, I wanna come up with a IMAX movie film still, and I wanna go ahead and use that as a template, and then I get a starting point, and you can go and look under the hood here to see what's going on. Okay, well, there is a an input field that's going on here, and then I'm seeing that there's two things going on. One of them's getting sent to Dolly, one of them's going to GPT-3. So it's a lot of nuances there, but today, like I said, I'm gonna show you how to do that from scratch. So we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new app. In this case, I wanna create something that helps me post something on LinkedIn. This could be for any social media. It could be for a blog post, but I'm gonna choose social media today. So I want my, I want my app to be more branded to something like LinkedIn. So let me just do some quick customizations on the icon. There we go. I can choose text color, background, and let's call mine a LinkedIn post bot. Um, and for the description, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just say an AI powered app that helps users quickly um, and easily create professional quality posts for their LinkedIn profiles. And I can choose to do whatever I want here. I know uh, some users have been having a lot of fun with the title, so I could say maybe I wanna do an icon at the front of this. So I'm just using the built-in keyboard to go and select something. So maybe it's like a LinkedIn post like this. Maybe I'll keep it like that. And then as far as the actual form goes, so this is actually where you want your end user. So this might be your internal team. This might be yourself. Hey, I'm gonna be using this. I'm actually gonna be the end user of my own product. Or maybe I have a small marketing team that's gonna be using this for my startup or for my mid-sized company. Um, so whoever the end user is, this is the thing, this is the parts that they're going to enter. So this is where you can start to customize to whatever your, your needs are. So I might start by saying, what's the topic of the post? And I would like to give examples just so people can get a sense for what's expected there. So I'll say an example is machine learning. So that's all I can type for now. We're gonna expand this as we go. For now, let's just start with what's the topic of the post. Let's jump over to flow and logic. And this is blank by default, but if you click the plus, this is where all the magic is happening. So you have uh, GPT-3, which is a large language model, an LLM, that basically Whatever you send it, it comes back with with copy for you. This is where all the hype's coming from. Something like ChatGPT, if you've heard of that. Um, a lot of that is powered by a form of GPT-3. It's GPT-3.5. Um, and this is basically what's happening under the hood for that. So for my prompt, I'm gonna see what I wanna create. So I wanna say something like, generate a professional LinkedIn post on the topic of and then I leave a space and I hit the tag. So there you go. This is actually what I'm sending over to GPT-3. Generate a professional LinkedIn post. So you can do that anywhere. Sometimes people like to write it like that. I could also say this is the topic. So I some people like to put the title. What is the topic of the post? Question mark. And then this is their answer. Um, you might even say question. Q colon. And then let's go answer. So this is like another layout that sometimes people run with. And then you could say, I'm just putting some lines and saying, turn the following, uh, turn, turn the information above into, turn the topic above, so we can be really clear, into a professional linked in post. Okay, so let's leave it like that. And I don't actually have to go and publish that yet. It does give me a sense for how long it, we think it'll run. Sometimes if it goes past 50 or 60 seconds, it will just hang and it won't finish. We're doing some things there to help improve that. But for now, let's go ahead and test this. So what is the topic of my post? I'm gonna go ahead and say augmented reality. So that's what I'm gonna submit. Let's go ahead and test this out. So again, I have not launched my application quite yet. 
the future of technology is here. Augmented reality has revolutionized the way we engage with our environment. So this is this is working. Technically, my app is ready to publish. This could be done within about 30 seconds, about a minute. <clears throat> you can get a title description, put an input field, create some small logic, and you actually have a bot that's ready to go. That said, I want to show you some things you can do to make this even more powerful. So let's start to add a few more questions. Like um, maybe we want to get more particular things that we want to make sure get covered. So what are parts of this topic that you want to make sure to include? Right, so if it's about augmented reality, I might say an example is the benefits of X for education, as an example, right? That might be something I would do. The other thing I might say is like, how long should this be? How long do you want the post to be? And I can say an example, again, might be one paragraph or two sentences, etc. So that now I have three input fields. I might even do things like what is the who is your target demographic? Demographic. So again, I can say professionals. Considering that this is LinkedIn though, it's pretty obvious that it'll be professional. So it could be maybe instead of who's your target demographic is um you know, I'm going to remove this one for now just to not com to, to complicate things. So now I have three input fields. Remember, our flow and logic has not been updated to reflect that. So even though the user is filling this out and submitting it, we actually are not able to send. We're not sending that to GPT-3 to consider that in the response. So again, if I follow this format, I might just do it again like this. I might say Q equals I put in my question. And then I might say A equals, and let's say, what are the parts of the topic? So this is another pattern. <clears throat> For the sake of education here, let's uh, quickly change up the layout. So what we're going to do is let's customize this one more time. I like to write this as more of a paragraph, typically. So I'll say, write a professional LinkedIn uh, post on the topic of, this is the topic, period. Make sure to include the following. And I spelled that wrong. Include the following, and then I'm gonna hit the tag. Here are the parts of the, tag, the, parts of the topics I wanna make sure I include. And then I'll say, also, only only return, and then this is the response, one paragraph for the post. So now I'm actually interwoven, like I have this interwoven right into my paragraph. It's a paragraph that has tags in it, and the user's responses get filled in here. So you're starting to see the power of what you can do within Brancher, right? This is still only hitting GPT-3, but let's go ahead and try this now. So let's say I'm gonna be talking about gen let's generative AI, and I want to make sure we talk about the benefits, benefits of generative AI for graphic designers. And then let's make sure that is two paragraphs long. Um, let's just make sure, yeah, there we go, two paragraphs submit. So let's see what happens now. So we have those forms. We have the logic, that is actually what's getting sent. And here I get my two paragraphs. Graphic designers have something to be excited about with generative AI. This technology will be used to create stunning visuals with minimum effort from a designer. So it started to get into the benefits. If I wanted this in bullet point format, I could say that, right? I could say, also only return two paragraphs for the post, comma, and make sure to include, oops, include at least three bullet points that use emojis. So that might be, and I, I like to do something like go, right? So let's do that one more time. The benefits, benefit, let's do something different. Like let's say um, computer vision for recycling and benefits of using machine learning specifically 
computer vision for um, reducing the friction that exists today. Today with recycling. There you go, and I want that to be three paragraphs. Submit. So, what I'm expecting now is I'm going to get a few paragraphs, three paragraphs at least. <clears throat> some of them will be in bullet point format. Now, I'm already seeing that. There you go. I got some in a list. Improve accuracy in sorting material. Increase efficiency. Reduce quality. So I got three paragraphs plus bullet points. So you start to see like whatever you send over to GPT-3 is really powerful. It allows you to go and just uh, tweak it to what you need as your result. Right? Does that make sense? So this is this is a really, really powerful way to do some of that stuff. Now, let's say I want to now also get not only my LinkedIn post, but I want to get an image out of this, right? So I might actually start to look at different things that I can do there. So let's actually do another GPT-3. And what I'm going to do is, as you can see in my second, uh, my second kind of prompt that's going to GPT-3, I can actually see there's a new tag here that says response number one. So whatever the response is, right, in this case, all of this, I could reference that. I can say, that's my response. And I could say, take the above and turn it into a image generation prompt. And that would give me what I need for Dolly. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I think I want to just take what the topic is. So I'll say topic is going to be this. And then I'll say, um, turn the above topic into a an image generation prompt I can use with OpenAI's doll e. There you go. So see how I've positioned that now. So let's just say it is augmented reality and I'm saying the benefits of AR for education and I'm gonna say two paragraphs so I should still get the bullet points because I had it set up that way and in this case I'm going to only get so just to be clear I'm only going to GPT-3 here and I'm gonna get back what the prompt is so because I haven't published this yet I'm more just debugging and testing. This little eye icon is what allows you to show it or not to the end user, right? So I can actually hide this and now be able to leverage this prompt for the image generation later. So augmented reality is revolutionized in education space. So you can see there's emojis and bullet points. And you say generate an image of a person using augmented reality technology in a futuristic setting. So, um, uh, so if I wanted to control this even more, right, I might even give an example. So it'd be like, um, example, this might be like an example prompt. And I might specify what the prompt looks like. 50 millimeter F1.4 F1 studio photograph of a, of topic of post so augmented reality machine learning computer vision for you know whatever um, uh, so that might be something it might be like that I'm leveraging an example of the prompt and I might say something like uh, extreme detail photorealism photorealistic studio lighting um, turn the topic above into a generator that can be used in, uh, that can be used for opening eyes dolly dolly and reference the example prompt so now I'm gonna leave it like that and let's actually send that to dolly so whatever the response is for that so this is response to so it might look something like this that's actually what I'm sending over to dolly and I'm gonna go ahead and hide the visibility of this output so the user is just gonna see the copy for their LinkedIn post and the image that gets generated for the post. 
So that becomes really powerful. Now I have an app that's really, really creative and really, really powerful. So let's go ahead and try that one more time. I'll say augmented reality for elementary school schools. And then I'll say, what are parts of the topic? How augmented reality, how AR can be leveraged for basic education, science classes, and mathematics. So that's what I'm going to say, and I want this to be three paragraphs long. So there you go. So you can imagine what I'm going to get as an output here. And I can see that there are four credits being consumed, and that's because I have a prompt going here, I have a prompt going here, and then these, um, the, the image prompts uh, will take a few more credits. So this is a two credit uh, as being, two credits are being consumed there. I'll go ahead and run that. And let's see what we get. I'm hoping we get a good paragraph, a uh, good few paragraphs, three paragraphs with some bullet points and emojis, as well as an image that I can leverage for LinkedIn. So there we go. I'm passionate about introducing augmented reality into elementary schools. AR is a powerful education. The power Here are a few ways AR can be done. Oh, and it didn't actually grab the emoji. So that's something we might want to tweak now and play around with. But there you go. There is a kind of creepy image here. You could start to improve this, right? So if I were to do debugging, I might not send it to Dolly yet, and I might just keep going and refining my prompt. So this is where you get to kind of play around with that and actually get a sense for what it's going to be like um, as you kind of go set that up. But theoretically, I could have this be ready for me, ready to go, create an image of. Um, so that is something, uh, and I think, you know, the output is being visible here. So create an image of an elementary school classroom, augmented reality, studio line, each other's sick. So it's kind of giving you what it's, what it's going to be sending. And then I have an image. From here, let's go ahead and publish it. So now my app is published and I can see I can see the app in the next tab here. So again, let's do it one more time. Let's say my topic is generative. Now let's go with, uh, let's go with um, music. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of something creative here. Uh, virtual reality, reality for professionals. Uh, professionals. Okay, so what are the parts of the topics? The benefits of VR for the business world. There we go. That might be what I'm going to do here. And then I want this to be two paragraphs. So I'm hoping the emoji situation is fixed here. Um, and if it's not, then I would go in and give an example here in my flow and logic. And I would say, you know, an example of my output should be something like this. And I could put the bullet points, I could put, you know, that kind of thing. And so, you know, it's now referencing, okay, emojis go before the bullet points, things like that. So let's give this some time. There we go. Virtual reality is an exciting new technology. Training and development, product design, marketing. Overall, VR is becoming extremely important. So I already have a LinkedIn post ready to go. I can see what actually got generated. And there you go. You see a virtual reality product shot because that's what I chose to do in my prompt, correct? So this is actually what got sent over to Dolly. And that gives you a sense for what to expect with building a prompt. From here, I can go and download this as an image. And I can reference that. I can copy the text. And you can see all the text is there in the clipboard. I might want to go and just share the results. So I can copy that. And if I open that in a new tab, you can see what I typed. Virtual reality for professionals, the benefits, and it's two paragraphs long. And this is generated. So now I have this and I can send this to my um, my team to go and craft and edit and things like that. Or it might be something I want to share on social media. If I want people on my team to actually start leveraging this, then I'd probably share the app. And so you can see that the app is here and I'd have to be logged in to run it. But if I'm logged in, then this is now available to my, for my team to go and run. And it's set up the way that I need to as a, as, as a marketing leader, right, for LinkedIn, for my business in this case. And uh, I think that gives you a sense for the power of what Brancher can do as you think about generating copy, being able to guide it along with how you do your prompting, um, especially in that flow and logic place. Um, so if I go back to that here, how all of this, all of this stuff happens here, and then how you can go and turn that into a prompt for Dolly.